Good morning, I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this video here. We're continuing the discussion on vectors, except here we have a relatively easy video, but a very important relevant video because this type of procedure comes in the future studies that you will undergo. We're talking about reversing a vector. What does reversing a vector really imply? It means you're just changing the direction. It just means that you're taking a vector which has the same magnitude as it originally did but you're flipping it around by 180 degrees. So 180 degree flip that represents a reversal of a vector. In this video we'll learn about this procedure and how you can represent the reversal of a vector. A very important concept to understand. Let's talk about what the reversing is. If a vector u in terms of a graph looks like an arrow which looks in that direction when you're reversing it, you're basically putting a negative before it and everything in terms of the magnitude, the length is the same, but the direction has become an exact reverse. If this right here is a positive u, this here is a negative u, and the means by which you reverse a vector is the minus sign. If a vector v looks something like an arrow pointing straight up 90 degrees, the same vector with the minus applied will become a vector of the same magnitude length, but it'll be 270 degrees exactly opposite if this was pointing north this now is pointing south the reversal procedure for a vector is by means of this coefficient minus applied to that vector let's look at this in terms of notation now if you have a specific vector and now i'm going to break away from the terminology let this vector be designated in the following ways you have an x comma y you see normally i would put u1 u2 but i'm just breaking away simply just to show you an effect over here, minus x, minus y. What am I doing over here? I'm showing you all the instances that will arise with regards to a single vector in each of the four quadrants. You know, quadrants one, two, three, four, each of these represent a point in, in any of those quadrants. I'm not looking at here at any of these quadrant line angles, but I'm looking at anywhere in between. This is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. In each of these instances, if you were to apply this minus sign to all of these, you'll see exact a reverse effect will occur. All right, and then we will examine that. This right here will become a minus x comma minus y. This here will become an x comma minus y, right? Not too hard. This here will become a x comma y. Everything here, when you look at it graphically, will make very good sense. This here will become minus x comma y. All right, how does this make sense? Well, let's look right here at this graph which I'm going to redraw. Let's look at the first case. You have an x comma y, an arrow very well here in the first quadrant. You applied a minus sign, it became a minus x comma minus y. Exact same thing, but now the arrow points in the opposite direction. Exact opposite, a true reversal is occurring over here. So that one specific instance is done, right? Look what happens when you have a instance right here. Minus x comma y very well means an arrow here in the quadrant number two. Opposite to quadrant number two is four. When you hit the minus sign, you get an x comma minus y, and that indeed is the case. Same magnitude, but a true reversal of the arrow, the vector, and you can see everything here is coming into play right here merely by the application of a negative coefficient. How about this case? Minus x comma minus y is a vector right here. When you apply the negative, it became a x comma y, right? Now your vector is exact same magnitude, but it's opposite direction. And in this instance, we have an x comma minus y which represents a vector in the fourth quadrant. Let's just dot it out like this to delineate it and differentiate it from what I already have. And now when you hit the minus on it, you get a minus x comma y and you have an exact opposite effect. Quadrant four vector became a quadrant two vector. So you can see it truly here by means of a negative, we have a true reversal which is going into place, which is not hard, but you need to know this. All right, our first question is this. We have to show the opposite of vector u, which is 2 comma minus 3. And you know the procedure is easy, but it can become complicated. Let me show you this right here is u. The opposite of vector u will be a negative place before it, and you'll hit the minus before exactly what you see, and you'll end up getting minus 2 comma 3. That right there is the opposite of this vector. But we can do a little bit more than what we are showing you, and I'll do that because there's no sense for me to show you another question of the same form, right? It doesn't make sense. This can very well represent the first question because it's easy. Now, as a second question, let's show you what we can do more with what I'm showing you right over here, and that'll be the case. What I'll do is I'll put this little reverse vector right next to it, and I'll show you what more could have been done. The opposite of vector u is, as we have determined, minus two comma three. 
look at the vector u and determine its magnitude. The magnitude of u is what? You're going to do 2 square, which is 4, plus 3 square, which is 9, and you're getting a root 30. And find its angle, the, the angle by which u is. You have 2 comma minus 3, it's a fourth quadrant angle. You'll do negative 3 divided by 2, you'll inverse tan it. You get a minus 56.3 degrees. You add this to your reference horizontal, like 360, you get 303.69 degrees. You can represent this vector u very well like this. You have a magnitude root 13, and now you have a cosine 303 0.7. Let's round it up, and you have a sine 303.7. Now let's look right here at this other component we have right here, the negative or the reversed vector. When you do the magnitude of this, and now when you do the magnitude of this reverse vector, what are you getting? You're, get, you're still getting 2 square plus 3 square root 13. As I told you, magnitude never changes with the reversal, only the direction will change. This right here will change. Now we have to do the angle determination over here. The reverse vector has a certain angle and that's going to be arctan, you know, the y component divided by the x component and we'll determine that. We'll do 3 divided by 2 minus, we'll inverse tan it, but we know this vector right here lands in the second quadrant. Adjust it with 180 degrees, add it to 180, you get 123.69. 123.69, which I'll write as 123.7. So now the opposite vector has this magnitude. It's still root 13, as you know. But now the angle cosine is 123.7 degrees. And, and you have the sine over here, 123.7 degrees. So you can see how we've done a little bit more over here by presenting our answers here, the vectors in a better format. This one, this one. So re remember, to reverse a vector, you're applying a negative sign. When you apply a negative sign, you truly reverse the direction of the vector, but you have no effect on the magnitude. The magnitude stays the same. Only thing is vector points in the exact opposite direction from its original position. That right there is a true reversal of a vector. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.